I've got no money, maxing out my credit card, that's not a good stage to be in. Clearly, you know, by most standards, people are talking about six months, 12 months of emergency funds. It's also important to look at your level of emergency funding on a holistic level. Uh, you have your savings, but also the kind of protection coverage that you need, uh, it's super important. And we sometimes really forget about it. A recent Financial Freedom Index by SingLife revealed that 75% of young adults in Singapore cannot cover an emergency bill. In the event of unexpected expenses, it's essential to be equipped so that we can safeguard ourselves and our loved ones to navigate financial uncertainty. I'm Rashan Gidwani, and joining us today is Helen Shen the Group Head of Health for Sing Life. Hi, Helen. Welcome to Tea Time Tuesday. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me. So let's dive right in. Helen, what are some of the financial challenges that young adults in Singapore face nowadays? That is actually a very complex question. I'm glad that you asked that. We look at what does retirement look like for most of Singaporeans. And more than 60% of them found that it was difficult for them to get to a financially free sort of state. And when you look specifically at young adults, that number is a lot more staggering. Like you said, 75%. 75% of them, whilst they're very young, do not have the confidence that they can get to a retirement stage. So it's a very complex question. They are living in a world where inflation is very high, the hospital charges and healthcare costs is also getting very high, and the uncertainty towards the future can be quite daunting. And that's why we are here to help to help them navigate through some of this and improve their financial literacy. Yeah, it's, it's shocking to learn that many young adults in Singapore can't cover an emergency bill. Could you walk us through the different levels of preparedness when it comes to unexpected situations? So we think of it as stages, right? You have maybe stage zero, where you're completely YOLO, I've got no money, maxing out my credit card, that's not a good stage to be in. Then we've got stage one, where you have a sense of what emergency funds look like. You're on the way to kind of prepare for that. So maybe you're saving some, you're budgeting your expenses. So great job on that. So you are kind of on the way and preparing. Then we've got the more advanced stage, right? Clearly, you know, by most standards, people are talking about six months, 12 months of emergency funds, and these folks have them. So we've called this the more mature group, but the interesting point is, and I've talked to many, many young adults, it's almost a fallacy to think that because I have six months, because I have 12 months, I'm all set. And that if anything were to happen, I've got nothing to worry about. But the truth of the matter is, it might make sense when you have, say, a loss of job or unexpected, you know, dropping your income, but you're not truly prepared for something on a bigger scale say, quite unfortunately, you have a hospital incident, right? Or you have a medical issue. When things like that happen, actually the six to 12 months may or may not really be enough, depends on the complexity of them. While we call this stage, you know, so sort of one, two, three, it's also important to look at your level of emergency funding on a holistic level, beyond just your savings, and to make sure that you cover for different parts of what could happen. What actionable steps can these young adults take today to kickstart their emergency fund journey, considering their dynamic lifestyles? Are there any alternative sources of emergency funds that millennials can explore beyond traditional savings accounts? I was there many years ago too, and I know it can be really daunting. So the analogy that I like to take, it's almost like Legos. We've all played with Legos when we were young. When we started playing with like the little pieces, the simple pieces, before you started building this gigantic sort of, you know, Star Wars looking um, Lego piece. And the idea is kind of like that. When you think about investments or savings and insurance, it's to start with the simple pieces, the plain vanilla ones, you know, get yourself a regular savings account, right? Make sure you have the most basic hospital coverage kind of insurance. Start with small ones. And I like to think of them as life goals. So when you hit a milestone, a life stage, say, I'm gonna get married, or tomorrow I'm gonna have a kid, 
And then your financial sort of goals become quite different because then you're thinking about very different sort of equations. And that's when you bring in different parts of the Lego, a more complex piece, a piece that is a lot more intricate. And the beautiful thing about Lego is that they're highly modular. You can replace some of them, you can build them up. And when you think about, you know, sort of building emergency funds that way and investing that way, it's a lot less daunting. You almost don't need to feel like, I have to make one right decision today, or I'm completely screwed for the next 20 years, right? So start small, think of the time horizon as well. A lot of these are shorter term ones, very immediate sort of behaviors that you can do. And a lot of these are more long term, wherein you're thinking about marriage, you're thinking about house, but you know, my biggest advice is to start small. And to the part that you were asking about, emergency funds and other alternatives. I would always say, think about insurance. Insurance is always the unsung hero. People don't think about it when you're trying to build your wealth. But insurance by itself as a financial asset, it's built to help us achieve some of our goals, right? Whether it's protection, whether it's your life coverage, whether it's your hospital, but there are also policies that really helps you to maximize uh, your returns. Right, so many of the ILPs, we have one as well that's really good. Those will help you maximize your returns um, that moves in tandem with the market, but also give you some sort of downside protection against life or terminal diseases. And those are really helpful as well to consider them when you do your mix of what your financial products should look like. Can you share a real life example that illustrates the importance of having a robust emergency fund? At Sing Life, I also look at claims, and you'd be quite surprised at the sort of claims I'm seeing. A lot more younger people are uh, requiring hospital bills, a sort of disease patterns is getting a lot more complex. So quite recently, I saw one, Reiner, um, he, he's probably not even 30 years old, and he's got a little bit of emergency funds, right? He's saved up during COVID, and he's in the video business, and he sort of made a little bit of savings. He's very aware of what financial literacy should look like, so great on him. But quite unfortunately, he's got cancer um, at just only 30. It's, you know, the shocking factor of that. And in that case, he was very lucky because he's got a Sing Life shoe plan that he's got many years ago. And this allowed him to not deplete into his savings and to focus on getting well and seeking the medical treatment that he absolutely needed at that moment. And I thought, you know, sometimes making sure that you have your emergency funds, uh, you have your savings, but also the kind of protection coverage that you need, uh, it's super important. And we sometimes really forget about it. Before we wrap up, could you share your top piece of advice for our audience to bolster their emergency fund and achieve greater financial security? It's very interesting. And this somebody asked me a couple of days ago and was like, what is your, you know, number one hack around uh, health coverage or like helping to make sure that when an emergency happens, you're all set. And I think it's the idea that it's gotta be really expensive and it's gotta be a lot of savings. And my number one hack is that sometimes there could be really cheap alternatives out there that millennials don't know. We have this feeling that it's gonna be, you know, I need a lot. I've gotta put in like 50% of my month, monthly paycheck into my little piggy bank. It really might not be. So recently at Sing Life, we launched a new plan. It's called the Sing Life Shield Starter and you've got a hospital coverage for just $1 cash a year. Like it's, it's really not a lot of money. And that's where I think young adults should start with, right? Something like I said, a modular thing to start with on a Lego basis. And then we build that on. So this paired with the different type of investments that you're putting in, paired with your little piggy bank, uh, paired with all the various things that we are working together. And that really, I think will set them up um, in this very, very volatile stage. Helen, thank you so much for thank your you. insightful information. I had knowledge. so much fun today. Brilliant. Okay, we'll do this again sometime. We should. Yeah. Great. Thanks, thank Helen. you. Thank you. The key to a resilient financial future often lies in the choices we make today, including incorporating insurance to strengthen our emergency fund. 
You've been watching Tea Time Tuesday. Until next time, keep seeking knowledge and financial empowerment.